Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, just briefly, I stand to, to support this very important initiative. Um, when we speak of the evolution of livelihoods, certainly one can have an appreciation for what the tourism industry, what it is to St. Lucians. Understanding that there was a time when our livelihoods were being supported by some other practices. But the tourism industry as we know it has been an industry that has taken shape on the coastal areas and some communities more than others. Mr. Speaker, the Community Tourism Initiative seeks to bring out a balance, equity, as well as apply the principle of social justice as it relates to persons having access to proper, dignified livelihood, a proper day of work. But Mr. Speaker, I wish to also highlight within the communities or the constituency of Castries Southeast, two areas of significant importance that has not happened. The Forestier Trail to Peter Floor is a significant landmark. And I'm hoping, in fact, myself and the Minister of Tourism have had discussion of that, and he has promised in a meeting in Forestier that he would make that a reality. And I'm speaking about the Minister of Tourism. He did agree that he will make this trail a reality because we have persons, in time past persons, used to visit Forestier to walk up that forest trail just to be able to get one of the most important view of the entire island, panoramic view, and we need to bring this alive. I'm also happy, Mr. Speaker, that we will see a lot happening to the Wavin Poisson disaster. We have now established a trail and a, and a place where we will establish some architecture, we have, we have we, we, some um, memorial to, to bring alive one of the, one of the, most, imp, one of the, the most significant disasters that has taken place in the history of St. Lucia, where visitors would be allowed to come and visit. We are doing that along the paths of the river, bringing some sort of um, sensitivity to our natural environment, wh whereas we are, we are bringing to the minds of persons what happened that led to this major disaster where so many persons lost their lives. So these two important initiatives, when I think of you know, community tourism, it brings that to mind. And I cannot help Mr. Speaker, as we speak of the evolution of our, our livelihoods, that the, the, the uh, member for Mikud North is not there. In his presentations earlier, make reference, and he, sorry, make, make good South. Sorry, Mr. Speaker, when you're not here, tend to miss, make a mistake. But um, the member for Mikud South, he did make the, the um, ask the question on this side, asking us how many of us have had certain kinds of, um, how many of us have been able to work, have been self-employed. And while the, 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 being a former prime minister and a member for Make It South, and we're speaking about community tourism, I ask myself the question, how much he knows about the life of, of a St. Lucia? Because I recall that as things change around, we adapt to respond to the, to, to the environment, to provide food for our children. And I recall there was a time when young persons would go around Marsha grounds selling icicles. There's a time when persons would go out to, 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 to sell ripe bananas. And I've participated in a number of things that has led me to where I am today. But the, the, the issue of community tourism actually brings a light, you know, this idea of persons, you know, independently pursuing their livelihood, working in an environment that is encouraged by this government. And this is powerful, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, we'll use an op the opportunity to address some, some deprivation, some, some deficit within our landscape. And I'm happy that Castries Southeast will lead in that regard. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, very soon you'll see the opening of a bus shelter, the first of its kind with washrooms. The first of its kind with washrooms. Mr. Speaker, very often when we speak of providing for our people, it's, sometimes it seems it must be influenced by the tourism industry. But community tourism reverses this. It said, if you provide for your people, 
visitors will come and enjoy what you have. And therefore, this government is moving ahead, and I'm happy that very soon you will see washrooms and a bus shelter at the, um, the, the what's the name of your, Bouton, at the Bouton Junction. Very soon you'll see this. When you go up to, when you get on a bus somewhere by Bannon, and you are heading to Deriso, and somebody stop off at that junction and have to wait for another bus to go all the way, waiting there, nowhere, no washroom. Very soon you will see a bus shelter with washrooms. You see, we, we many some years ago, Opico, yes, <laughs> yes, it's been led, but the first one is near completed at the junction of Bele and Sarat, and you will see the opening, and I use the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to cast the top and to put some, some um, uh, two barbers and a hairdresser. They'll be paying a small rent to the council so they can exploit their livelihoods at the same time. But, but that's not all, Mr. Speaker. You see, community tourism reminds me of something. You see, when this administration were campaigning in 2016, the member for Mikud South described step in a particular way. He said he saw women cutting grass with nowhere to urinate. He said that. But he came into power and he never built not one washroom to address the problem. But like was said earlier on, we not people who talk, we act. And very soon we'll provide for our people, creating an environment so that community tourism is just is not about going through on the, on the coast where they have the massive hotels, but allowing visitors when they come through our island, as they would have stayed away and imagined the various sites as the battle. And this is an, an, another important initiative. You know, the, 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 the battle relay has, has opened up St. Lucia Saint Lucia to St. Lucians in a way that we have not seen before. And I'm sure, and I'm sure visitors paying attention to the battle relay, they are seeing interesting sites. They are seeing places and asking, where is this location? And they would be tempted to visit. But we are not. Oh, Bradley? Oh, Mikusov. Well, he's not taken part. He's not taken part in it. Yeah. Well, the battle relay is something that is for some special people. But I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, what I think is important important to me about community tourism is that it forces us to move and provide for our people, as against going and provide for visitors. When visitors, when we provide for our people, when we develop our place, and the Minister of Tourism, I, 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 um, I want him to, to appreciate that Castry South is, is a constituency that when you leave the, the, when you leave the International Airport, you must pass through Castry South. East. And our roads, of course, during the new financial year, must look like a place that when people pass in that we feel proud about it. It's not what it's supposed to be at this time. So community tourism tells us that we must prepare our place for ourselves, a place that we are proud of so that when visitors come, we can share it with them. So Mr. Speaker, I am happy for the investment, but I'm more, more importantly, as the minister responsible for our populate, vulnerable population, I am happy that our people will receive and will benefit from community tourism because the investment made will impact every household and every community indirectly and directly because we would have prepared our place for our people. This is the real tourism. It is not the kind of tourism where you have slave, a sort of a, a, a slave house on, on, on the coast where persons are, are, are leaving their children behind all night and, and, and have to suffer the social breakdown and social mess up of our fabric. Community tourism is truly the concept that was, that is featured in the Bible story of the prodigal, of, of the, the Good Samaritan, sorry, because he found somebody on the roadside hurt and was able to get that person and place in an inn because provision was made before this thing happened. So, Mr. Speaker, I am happy that community tourism embraces the principle of physical development and planning, 
it embraces the, the, the um, Ministry of Equity and Community Development, it embraces local government and the upkeep of our entire community because if you have the, the um, if you have a bed, a bread and breakfast or, or a place in, in, in Arendelle Hill, the road leading to Arendelle Hill must we must consider that. You cannot you cannot say that you're not having that person in, in at the back of, 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 of Shabbat cannot participate in community tourism because the road they're not good. No. And there's a, there, you cannot um, ask somebody not to participate because you have dumping of garbage somewhere in a location. No. It means that our entire community, our entire island must be kept in a certain condition because anywhere you can have products where our people need to be embraced. So this is brilliant. This is, this, is a, this is a prime minister that is pushing this country forward. And if, if there was a definition of putting people first, I think it is captured in this initiative of community tourism more than anything. So when the, 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 the member from Mikud South said, we're just changing the name. We are not just changing the name. We have changed, we're changing the name, we're changing the game. And we're changing the aspect of how we cater for people because the people of St. Lucia indeed are special to us. And Mr. Speaker, finally, on, on the matter of just, just, to, just to end on this note, I want to leave this with this house, with every member here. Mr. Speaker, when I just got into this business of politics, leaving SSDF, I was not one who, who embraced tourism. I used to speak about tourism like I couldn't be bothered with it. I, but I got to appreciate its contribution to the welfare of our people. But one of the things I want to leave with us, that I do not appreciate at times, that is only when visitors are coming to a particular lo locality, we think of making provision for them. Our visitors must come and enjoy what provision is made for our people. So do not tell me that they need a toilet or washroom because visitors are coming. No. They need washrooms because our people need washrooms. When visitors come, they'll use the washrooms as made there for them. This is the kind of development that makes community tourism alive and well. This is the kind of community tourism. Reason why, Mr. Speaker, because when you, when you sit here at this chair, you cannot forget where you used to walk when you were younger, on the street with your girlfriend going to a party, and she needed to use a washroom. What, is it acceptable that she must go at the back of a vehicle? Is it acceptable that she must knock on somebody's door and ask permission? Is it, is it, is it acceptable that, that it's normal for us to do it in the way, and then when they behave in the way that they behave, we find all kinds of ways to describe them, but provision is not made for them to behave differently. Community tourism accentuate the point that we're not just providing for people, but we're uplifting our people. And this is what we must always remember, that when we sit here, we must not forget the streets that we walk on. We must not forget the experiences that we have had, the deprivation that we have seen out there. When we come here, we must remember it and go back there and fix it. This is what we are doing here in community tourism. I thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Speaker.